Morning guys, Captain Dan here. We are in uh, gloomy today, downtown Chicago and uh, Burnham Harbor. We are on our Prestige, one of our client Prestige 450 Flybridge and uh, we're gonna be doing an impeller change, show you how we do it on the Volvo IPS D6 engine impellers and uh, we'll walk you through the process and uh, show you some tips and tricks. Follow on a along. Volvo uh, IPS 600 D6, Volvo D6 Pentas. Um, our impeller location is right here, this flat area. We're gonna have to remove those screws. And once we get there, we'll use what we've got here, an impeller puller. So this will twist into the front of the impeller and this will go into the hole here and help push the impeller out. Uh, we actually usually, we kind of modified it, we take a longer bol uh, bolt, which will help uh, pull the impeller further out and make it a little easier for us. Um, use this socket wrench to uh, twist the impeller bolt and uh, puller bolt. All right, for this process, you're gonna need a low profile uh, socket wrench. And some of these tight bolts in the back corner are pretty difficult to get at without a uh, pretty low profile wrench. Uh, when you'll see some water start leaking out of here, it's not a problem. As long as you shut off the seacock uh, at the uh, water uh, inlet, it shouldn't be a problem. It might just uh, be a little bit of water coming out from the sea strainer. With the cover removed and the impeller exposed, we're able to screw in the impeller puller. Uh, now at this portion, this is where we use the longer bolt, and the longer bolt's going to give us a little more uh, distance out of the, uh, the chamber there to make it easier to pull the impeller once it gets out. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll socket uh, it out as much as we can. You'll notice it'll slowly uh, be creeping out here. So uh, the impeller is still pretty jammed in there. It's pretty tight. So we wait till we get it as far out as possible. Uh, you can test it every once in a while. And uh, once it's ready, you can pop it out, move on to the next spot. All right, so we've pulled the impeller. And as you notice, we're missing an entire blade. The rest of them are pretty intact. Uh, but when we're missing an entire blade, it's going to go somewhere into the engine. Likely it's going to stop right here at the heat exchanger. So what's going to happen is water's coming into the engine. It's going in through the sea strainer, into the impeller. The impeller is then pushing it up and into the engine through this water hose that goes behind this filter. And it's going to stop right here. Any of these blades that are going to get caught up. So the more blades that get caught up in this little area here, it's going to cause a uh, restriction of water flow, which will eventually uh, negatively affect the engine or the engine performance. So what we're going to have to do is remove this holding bolt here and eventually remove the water hose here to pop off this area to get to this. So we're going to slowly go through the process. I'll show you how we do it. First things first, we're going to have to remove this oil filter because we're not going to be able to get to one of these clamps uh, on here to get to that part. So we'll go from there. So after loosening both of those hose clamps, you're going to be able to remove this final bolt, which is holding this uh, heat exchanger in place. Uh, once we've done that, we can start to wiggle and, uh, and try to get in there. You're going to need a probably a flathead screwdriver or something, uh, something flat to kind of pop this hose off because this hose has been uh, clamped down there for a long period of time, nice and tight. So get in there, kind of wiggle the exchanger itself, uh, pop the hose, and get... When you see in here... This is the area that anything's gonna stop at, unless it's a really small particle, it's not gonna be able to get through this little uh, surface. So nothing's right here built up, stuck in. So we look at the water hose of the incoming, and I can see right here, 
that we've got multiple blades, pieces of blades, which will easily get put back together here to show that this is where this all came from. So we have the replacement blade or the missing blade to show that we are no longer missing the pieces. So now we can comfortably, confidently put this back together, put a new impeller into this spot, and uh, this engine will run beautifully. For So when we have to remove this oil filter to get to this uh, hose clamp, what happens is you have an exposed oil well here and all these little particles will flake off. They paint these hoses oftentimes and they'll flake off. So if you notice our little uh, towel here caught a couple of these flakes, so it just kind of keeps this oil reservoir clean. And we'll go ahead and remove this, bring the oil cap back on. All right, so now that we've got the impeller out, we've removed the impeller blades that had shredded off and come to the heat exchanger. We've got our new impeller ready to go. All blades are nice and clean, brand new. Now we're gonna have to insert it into the uh, impeller hole here. It's a little smaller than the actual size of the impeller, so we're gonna have to bend some of these blades, kind of kink them up and insert it into this hole. We're gonna have to make sure that the teeth here match with the teeth on the inside of the post once we do that, we're gonna to have to force it into its position. So we're gonna need a little bit of uh, assistance, bring some handy boat soap with us. So we're just gonna kind of lube this whole thing up a bit. Plus, once we restart the engine, and this is all lubed up with uh, boat soap, when we start the engines and water's properly flowing through the engine on the outside of the boat to make sure that water's flowing through the engine, we'll be noticing bubbles and soapy water coming out of the engine. So it really does help prove the fact that we're running water through the engine properly. So it's all lubed up, getting ready to go. It'll gonna go into this position here, move some of the wires out of the way. Once we've inserted it, we have to push forward as hard as we, as much as we can until it kind of stops make sure it's in position. Now, to really, you know, you don't have a lot of hand room to really move. So what we bring out is our handy dandy uh, car uh, tire iron. And we're gonna use this post down here as a leverage point. So we just need an extra little bit of leverage. And once we gotta make sure we twisted it to it fits in the right spot. There we go. Now, Tire iron. So it started to go in. Now we've got another. I'm just gonna push. There we go. So, not the easiest leverage point but you got to use an extra some sort of tool to help get it into the place now we make sure it's as far forward in so the cap will sit on here nicely before we replace the uh the cap and screw it all into place we're gonna have to replace this o-ring this is uh it'll get flattened out and smushed over time and lose its uh, shape and seal so in the box comes a new o-ring and we'll use just a little bit more of the soap to give it a little extra seal help it stick into place here nice and ready now we reapply it screw it all in open up the seacocks turn on the water fire up the engine watch for soapy water and we're all good